You're listening to The Real Short Box, a comic book podcast made for geeks by geeks. Hello, everybody out there in podcast land. Thank you for listening. We are The Real Short Box. My name is Donald. And my name is Kevin. Ah, Kevin, almost sounded like you forgot your name there for a second. It can no. happen. Well, no, old age kicks in. You know, I know you're getting older and older. It happens. Yeah, um, that's true. If we ever forget your name, if you forget your own name and I forget your name, um, let's just call you, uh, uh, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, how about uh, Jamarcus? I've always no, liked that name. That's a bad name. Is it? Yep. Okay, what about Stuart? No. No? Well, you think of something. Uh, Anyway, today we are talking about comics. Should you invest? Now, I know a lot of people have questions. Um, There's a lot of, I've been noticing online and in in chat forums and things like that. You know, the old AIM chat. Uh, People have been talking. There's been some uh, some chatter on the the lines there. And uh, (laughs) I sound so old. And uh, they've been saying what people have been saying in like, uh, you know, Instagram comments, Facebook, things like that is first time collector here or newbie collector. And should I do this or that or this? You know, should I slab this book for CGC? Uh, If CGC, if not CGC, should I do is CBCS? okay? things like that. Um, You know, should I invest in this book or that book? You know, should I get a raw version or a slabbed version? and so on and so forth. So we're kind of going to be talking about that. Yes, indeed, we are. Um, So when we're looking at that, uh, as far as collecting, anybody can collect. Collecting is easy, and it is still relatively inexpensive, I'm going to say. Uh, Sure, you can get stocks for pennies, uh, but those aren't going to give you large returns, much like most of the comic books you purchase. Unfortunately, every week when you go to the shop, if you're one of those people, and I know you're out there, that continuously buys number one issues, you're only going to hit occasionally. And the amount that you spend each week versus your return, if you land upon a book, let's say, uh, for example, Something is Killing the Children. Uh, that's a relatively new comic book within the last, what, year, year and a half. That's right. Uh, very popular. Uh, you, if you got that first issue, first print, you have some money, you know, a couple hundred dollars at least. Uh, which is good. And if you get it graded, CGC, CBCS, it comes out like a 9.8. That's a very high grade. You're going to make even more money, five to $700, which is excellent. But you've probably spent $40 every week buying new books. That's $160 a month that you've spent. And you've been doing that for how long? So you have to look at a lot of key factors. And so we're going to get a little bit into that today. And I think the first thing you wanted to talk about, Kevin, was vintage keys, correct? Yes, vintage keys. You know, those are like the blue chips, kind of blue chip stocks like IBM, Apple, Microsoft. So if you want to invest in vintage comics from the bronze and silver age, well, in my opinion, you're, you can't go wrong there, by and large. It's just not a bad idea. If you have the money to put down to get a Hulk 181, even a crappy version at 1.0, 2.0, not a bad thing. As we know, when we go on eBay, you see coverless Hulk 181 selling or dog chewed ones still selling for hundreds of dollars or sometimes a thousand dollars. True. Kevin, I got a question for you. You mentioned Microsoft. Uh, do you ever think that uh, Bill Gates told his wife, uh, now I guess ex wife, that he was micro hard? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Sorry. Keep going. Yeah. You know, you have Hulk 181. I mean, another one that's a good one to get your hands on before the next movie comes out or the re- or the reboot i should say comes out is tomb of dracula 10 if you have the money to afford drop maybe 500 dollars or 700 dollars or so on a low yeah. grade tomb of dracula 10 go right ahead if you can afford more to get a high grade then absolutely knock yourself out and get that too because we know that book is going to continue to rise in value over the next couple of years with with vintage keys it's an interesting thing because you have to look ahead very very far ahead in the market you have to look at you can't just you you it's hard, very hard to get lucky you have to be educated so you have to take a look at the vintage keys and you have to take a look at what's coming out primarily what's been happening 
is certain vintage keys are building in momentum based on speculation for film and television. That's been uh, happening a lot ever since uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe was created. I, I mean, it happened a little bit back in the day, you know, before the MCU, of course. Um, you know, you would you would get spikes in Batman books when Batman would, you know, uh, appear in a movie. Uh, you know, if, if a certain villain was Two-Face or something, his first Silver Age appearance would go up some in value. But never to these astronomical amounts that we see with Marvel books, particularly Marvel vintage keys. Um, what I was thinking was, for example, when you're looking at that, uh, you mentioned Tomb of Dracula. Now, Tomb of Dracula, you can still get a key, uh, the, the first appearance of Blade, um, which is Tomb of Dracula number 10, if I'm correct. That's right. You can still get that for anywhere from 400 to eighteen hundred dollars depending upon the grade in in which case i would say if you're a newbie collector go on the lower end you know and, and that way you're not investing your life savings you're investing enough but you're still going to get a decent return back and and the reason i say this is because um as they start announcing more and more they've already announced uh the the lead in blade and yep. marshall Shaw ali that's right yep and they've already announced that this film is happening. They, they've got it on the timeline. Um, so we know usually when Marvel announces something, they're going to go through with it. Uh, you know, and humans didn't quite work out the way they thought it would. And that's OK. They're, you know, they're, they're going back to the drawing board on that. And I get that. It's probably partially due to the failure of the ABC television series. Um, that was just horrid. Uh, there's no other way to explain it. It was just really bad. Um, so you, you have to look at that and you have to say, OK, um, so. Blade's coming out. This is going to be a very popular character. It already he already is a popular character. He's had three movies, but this is still an affordable book. And you look at other books and I'm not talking just like. Fantastic Four or Spider-Man or things like that. Let's look at Taskmaster. Uh, back when they announced Taskmaster was the villain in the Black Widow movie. Now, obviously, that didn't quite turn out how we thought, but still a cool character nonetheless, uh, at least in my opinion anyway. And there is uh, a, a lot of depth to that book, but not quite what we thought it would be. So that Taskmaster book uh, has gone down in value some, but it's still maintaining a little bit of value. So you have to look at – basically what I'm saying is you have to look at the staying power of the character. And we know that Blade is a character that keeps coming up. Like they are going to venture into the Marvel Dark Universe. They're going to venture into Man-Thing. They're going to venture into Morbius. We've we've already seen footage for that. You know, yeah, that's world, coming from World by Night. Yeah, Werewolf by Night is going to be coming. Moon Knight is already uh, in Disney Plus series coming in a, in a little while. So we see all of this building. So you have to start looking at that. Now, if I was a betting man, I would say, yeah, get the blade, you know, get a lower grade one, you know, four or five hundred, six hundred bucks, somewhere around there. But also look at Man Thing as an option, too, because if they hit Man Thing and they do it right, it could be big for Marvel. And it is still a relatively affordable, uh, not all that popular, uh, lower end key. It's not like one of their big gun keys, but it's a lower end key. You know, it's still an important vintage key. It's just not pulling in the money that some of these other books are. That's true. You never know. Also, another one as a minor potential key down the road, maybe Son of Satan. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I know they did the Hellstorm series on... Uh, on Hulu, it failed miserably. So that book is definitely obtainable right now. That's also something to look at. Inhumans are pretty relatively obtainable um, because they had a failed series. Anything that fails, you immediately need to look at and go, okay, should I pick this one up and why? Like in humans, for example, yes, the series failed, but they are so heavily tied to the Fantastic Four. It's going to be extremely hard eventually for them to not come around to those characters how do you not use medusa or black bolt or karnak you know how do you not use these characters also if you if people are able to do so and with all these books are certainly skyrocketing every month it seems 
if you can get your hands on some of that early X-Men bronze keys, you know, that early Claremont run, mm-hmm. that would be, that'd be wise. But at this, but at, at this point, I would say any issue after, after 129 or even better after the dark Phoenix saga, it has concluded, you know, any of the books before then and the books afterwards, probably a good idea. Once you get past like issue 102, if you can get your hands on some of those books, it's not a bad idea. I tell you what, like I, I go to the shop every week, the comic shop, and the moment they mention that there's a new character coming out in in one of the the major guns, the DC or Marvel, they mention there's a new character. That book sells through the roof. It just of sells course. out. It of always course. sells out. So what's to say that a '90s X-Men book that had the first appearance of, for example, just for example, Omega Red, you yes, know, X-Men Four. What's to say? And that had uh, what a million copies or more of that issue sold. I mean, that was, they were selling out all the time on those X-Men books, the Jim Lee run in the early uh, to mid nineties with, with Jim Lee and in that particular X-Men title. So what's to say that you can't go back and mine some of those characters that have yet to appear. Some of these minor characters that the uh, Marvel cinematic universe might say, Hey, this character would work really well as part of this group. And I'm not saying that that one's going to go through the roof, but if you pay a dollar for it and eventually it's worth 70 bucks, that's a pretty good return. Especially if it's the new stand edition. We should emphasize that because the new stand editions are not as uh, printed as the direct edition ones. So that'd probably be a thing you could target. Yeah. If you wanted to do the new stand, you know my opinion on new stand. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, I just want that that book. It doesn't matter if it's new standard direct edition. I don't care. But a lot of people do. And they want the new stand because they think that that la- that survived that it's amazing that it would have survived in such high condition. And it has to be a high grade by the way. If you get a low grade new stand, that's not going to much matter. No. Nope. You want to get a high grade new stand. So if it looks perfect, if it looks cherry, it's a first appearance. It's an X Men book, and it's a newsstand. Snatch it up if it's reasonable. Just snatch it up. Don't even ask. Just do it. You know, another book that I believe is going to continue to go up would be Iron Man two eighty two, uh, the first cover appearance of War Machine. Yeah, yeah. Cover appearances are another big thing, and that's because uh, the first appearance of characters you can't always afford them or want to be able to afford them. Uh, or by the time you get to it, it's too late and it, the price is too out of range. And in which case, people are now looking at second and third appearances or first cover appearance or first brief appearance of the character. You know, they're starting to look at other ways to get this character. Uh, much like I did, I think it was, what was it called? Amazing Heroes, that that issue that I got uh, with the the first appearance of the Ninja Turtles in print. Yeah, that was it. It was like the Amazing Heroes magazine or something like that. Yeah. I couldn't afford the actual Ninja Turtles number one. I don't have the 50, you know, the 40 to 80 grand or whatever it costs now to get a first print Ninja Turtles number one. I'm just not going to be able to do that. I thought, thought Gobbledygook was the one that's like the most valuable, that, that weird it's, little. It's not anymore. And, uh, and the uh, reason why Gobbledy, Gobbledygook is not is the, because the false, the false ones. It was printed in such low grade quality that it's very easy to make a replication and, and make a knockoff and call it a, a real version. So it's extremely hard to for them. So they no longer even mark that really as the first appearance. Now it's just Ninja Turtles number one. Oh, okay. So that kind of fell out of, uh, out of favor with the fans and, and with collectors simply for that reason, because they were buying replicas and getting ripped off. And nobody wants that, you know, nope. that's not something that should happen. Yeah, especially you're put, especially like you're putting down like a you know a, a home payment or house payment down for a right. book like that, and you get ripped off. Whenever there's value, whenever there's money to be made, there is theft and there is oh. deceiving. You know, Absolutely. deceiving. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's a terrible thing, and shame on anybody that does that. But what I was saying was, so I got that amazing heroes issue um, because it is the first print. Of it's a, it's a magazine that does advertisements for like pre sales and stuff, kind of like a previews book. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's articles in there and stuff. It's nice. Uh, so they had the first ever appearance of the four turtles in actual print form, and it was still obtainable. It was like at the time I think it was like three or four hundred dollars or something. 
And I was like, okay, well, I can never afford 40 or 80 grand, or I don't want to afford it. So I'm just going to get this. It's their actual first printed appearance. So that makes me happy and I'm satisfied. And now I can move on with my collection and go look at something else. There you and go. That, that's what you can do also, you know, as a collector, you can look at, uh, you know, like for example, the Miles Morales, if we're talking modern keys, a lot of people are saying his first appearance was a Marvel previews book. Yeah. Marvel previews 95, I believe. Yeah. And they're trying to sell that book for thousands of dollars because of it. And they're getting that amount because people think that that is the true first appearance. And when it comes out later that they say, oh, that's not really, that's an ad. That's not an actual first appearance. You're going to be very upset. Then people will be upset. But right now, if you have that somewhere lying around, if you're not much of a collector, but you went into a shop, you picked up a, a comic and they threw a, one of those previews in the bag for you. You could have a thousand, two thousand dollars just lying around, like on your coffee table in your bathroom, uh, you know, in, in a box sell someplace, it. and not sell even it. know. Sell it while you can. Yep, sell it immediately. Sell it while you can. Sell it while there, there's still some relevance to that book. Um, to now, me, of course, Ultimate Fallout Four to me is is the first appearance. Uh, I don't want to play games with these preview books. Right, and that's when we're going to talk about like modern keys. Ultimate Fallout Number Four is a modern key that I think is something that you can build upon. It's something that it'll go down a little bit in value, but then it'll shoot back up and then it'll go down and it'll shoot back up, but it's never going to crash. There's always going to be value to that character because that character is now important inside the Marvel universe. It is somebody that they've poured it over from uh, the ultimate run of comics line that they did for Marvel, Marvel ultimate run. Uh, they poured it over from there into the actual what is it the 616 or whatever they call it the the yeah, current 616 universe yeah the the current marvel universe that they have you know where there's captain america spider-man and blah 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 and they're all in their costumes regularly that you've been reading since you were a kid you know it's it's that universe now that he's in uh they had the spider-verse film they're doing another spider-verse film and there's even talks of him being in a live action at some point so uh, no no there's no question it's only a matter of time Right. This is a character of importance. This isn't a character of relevance. And this character is only going to build with time. So it would be a good idea to invest in something like that. That is what we would call a modern key. Um, there's other books that are like somewhat modern keys now. Uh, they're, they're not classic modern keys, but they're, they're what I would call quick flips. So something like Something is Killing the Children which is a uh, a boom series that came out about a year and a half ago. Year and a year, year and a half ago or so. Yeah, something around there. And this book is very good. I've, I've read the first volume. It's very good. It's very interesting, very fascinating. I very much enjoyed it, and I look forward to reading more. Um, and if you got the first issue, you know, the first print of the first issue, like I said, you have a few hundred dollars. If you grade it, you may have five to seven hundred. It just depends on what people are willing to pay. I would say if you have that, you hold off onto it. You, you just hold it, and you don't do anything with it. You can go get it graded, sure, but don't sell it yet. Wait until they get a little further along with the uh, announced television series that's going to happen for this. And I think they're going to call it House of Slaughter is going to be the name of it because something that kill, is killing the children is a hard sell for a TV series uh, when it comes to family time. You know, it's it's not something that's – really appetizing to a lot of people so i think well, that, house uh, of slaughter <laughs> house of slaughter doesn't sound as appetizing either <laughs> it really doesn't but i think when you're talking about killing children there's a difference you know if, if you're slaughtering people yeah people will tune in to watch that but if it's like oh we're killing children i don't know if i want to see that tonight you know i'm not yeah, into that true. so i think they, way... <laughs> they did a good job flipping it still has that intriguing name it still has that edge to it uh, but it doesn't quite have that uh, edge that could build harm for the series. That's true. Another one uh, we should mention real quick is the all new Marvel Now point one number one, the first uh, Kamala Khan. Yeah, that would be another modern key. That would be one that could be built upon because Kamala Khan is coming uh, very soon. Very, very coming. soon. Yeah, she's going to be in a movie. She's going to be in the Marvel's movie. Uh, with Captain Marvel and uh, whichever version of Monica Rambeau they decide to go with. Also, isn't her Disney Plus show coming out later this year? 
yeah, I think there is a Disney Plus show coming out later this year. Yeah, I think you're correct. I'm pretty so, sure. So she's coming. She's coming very, very soon. So you yes. know what? You know, grab that. Or if you can't afford that one, then grab Miss Marvel number one. Even the first, even the second or third print is still worth something. So yeah, yeah, and that's something we didn't talk about either. Like. For example, uh, the first blade. If you can get a replica, like uh, what do they call those, where they're their exact um, copy of the book, like page for page, even with ads. I think they. Yeah, they, they have a special a, a special name behind it. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, like a replication or something like that. But it's pretty much the same book. It's just reprinted, and it has the vintage ads in it and everything. Those books that Marvel's been putting those out. They did it for Taskmaster. They just did one for Werewolf by Night. Um, I recommend, and that's the first Moon Knight, by the way, uh, Werewolf by Night number 32. Uh, they, they did a replication of that. So I recommend if you can go to your comic book shop, buy it. Buy it for, you know, a dollar or four dollars, I think is what it might be, four dollars. Go ahead and, and purchase it because I don't think that they have done, if if they've done any, I don't think they've done many of the uh, Werewolf by Night number 32 reprints. So even a reprint like a replication of that book is going to be worth some money uh people are already selling it online for anywhere from 20 to 50 dollars and so, also if you, if you can get a hulk 181 replica you, you better definitely get that yeah and you want to make sure that it's it's the exact page for page ad for ad uh replicational book and you want to and that there's a couple versions of that actually, I believe. So you want to make sure that you get the first version of that, the one that was printed first, not the latest, because as you start to get reprints and reprints put out there of the same book, it starts to dilute the the value of that print of that book, um, not the original, of course, but of the 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 reprints. So you want to make sure you get an earlier reprint. The earlier, the better when it comes to that kind of thing. Um. And that's what we're talking. We're talking about quick flips. Another one would be like Sweet Tooth. That's a good example. That was a huge hit on Netflix. Uh, the comic book actually cost a dollar when it first came out. Uh, and, and I believe, Kevin, you and I both had a copy. And that's true. Uh, you sold yours a little earlier, and I sold mine a little later. And um, it happens. Yeah. And, and that's another example that happens. You, for example, you don't think that something's going to hit, that they'll ever do anything with a series like that. Who would have thought? I mean, who would have thought that that series would be something? Nobody. Nobody thought that. I just happened to have it in a box, and I never moved it or sold it or done anything with it. So I pulled it out and was able to make a, a decent amount off of it just based upon the hype of the Netflix series. And the reason why that that's called a quick flip is because once this Netflix series comes out, and which it did, uh, Sweet Tooth is no longer uh, going to – it's not going to get any higher, in other words. They're not going to plan a movie on it. Uh, odds of that are very slim. Uh, the Netflix series, they come out with season two. Okay, great. But the hype is not as big as it was for season one because the surprise is there in season one, and everybody's excited by that. That's right. And as good as it gets. Right. So it's as good as it gets when the first season comes out. And everybody loves it or it's announced and it's about to come out and you want to sell it and make some money. That's when you would want to sell a book like that. Um, one more thing I want to mention real quick uh, before we go is we were talking, Kevin and I, you, you know, we had a conversation not long ago uh, with uh, with another friend of ours, a sensational one. Um, those of you that listen to our podcast regularly would know who that person is. Um, he does some of the comic shop talks with us uh those are podcast episodes that we do occasionally at uh the comic shop we can be heroes in chatsworth california and he'll sit in with us and discuss comics and, and all things comics really in pop culture but we were talking and it was in a, in a parking lot at night and we were talking about the black panther book what are your thoughts on the sustainability about that that first appearance fantastic 452 first appearance of uh chitala i believe it, it, it'll be a sustainable book moving forward um it might slow down a little bit depending on on, on the success of the second movie mm -hmm. especially with you know the unfortunate tragic passing of chadwick boseman um a lot does ride on that sequel so we'll see how it goes you know hope, hope for the best but i believe moving forward no matter what it's good it's going to be a permanent key book regardless yeah i could definitely see that 
Um, I, I do wonder about the viability myself personally about the viability of the book uh, a little bit, a little bit. And that's only because they have to pivot so hard now with this film. I'm sure there's been years invested in planning this film and the untimely sad passing of Chadwick um, really put a crimp in those plans, I'm sure. So they had to go back to the drawing board and look at what they had story wise and what they can do without that character, without the lead character, without the the character that created basically that universe. And and we're talking about um, of Wakanda. The universe of Wakanda was built around the Black Panther. They didn't go, oh, well, we have, you know, Wakanda and then they create, you know, characters within. They created Black Panther and then they talked about Wakanda, and then they built out the universe of Wakanda, the world of Wakanda within the Marvel Universe and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's a very integral, very important part. At least it was in uh, in um, Avengers Infinity War. It was an extremely – and Endgame as well. It was an extremely important part uh, because there was – that's where the final battle took place. You know, That's where everything went south, and that's where everything um, – was kind of the the day was saved so i i think it's going to be interesting to look at that black panther as a book i it is still uh out of the major major keys it is probably the most obtainable still so i would say if you can get it even if it's a low grade pick it up and just don't literally sit on it but just sit on it for a while absolutely um well i think this was great kevin um I, I hope uh, everybody out there listening enjoyed. It's just a quick little uh, session on uh, investments and what you should look at and things like that. I'd love if any of you had questions to go ahead and reach out to us on our Instagram, uh, The Real Short Box, or on our Facebook page. Um, message us there. You can even message us on Twitter if you'd like. We have all three. Uh, if you have any questions about you know what to invest or how or anything like that, uh, reach out to us. Let us know uh, what you think. And uh, – you know, we'd be happy to help. Absolutely. And we thank you again for listening to The Real Short Box. My name is Kevin. Uh, my name is Donald. And if we don't see you out there, we'll see you at the lucid, righteous, and very friendly comic book shop. This has been The Real Short Box. We'll see you at the comic shop. Thanks for listening. 